Hi, this is Dorothy Guining with Scrapbooking Quebec. In this video, I'm going to give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to create this layout. I will include measurements for page parts and photos on the screen. Also, this is a stash bust, and for me, a stash bust includes more than just paper, stickers, ribbon, etc. I also do a tool bust, and what I mean by that is when I start this type of layout, I also go through my stamps, punches, dies to see if I have any tools that will enhance my theme. Um, the reason why I'm mentioning this is because I've been teaching scrapbooking since 2004 and I know a lot of scrapbookers. Scrapbookers love to buy material. They love to buy tools, but they often forget what they have. So by looking through your tools, you remind yourself what you have. You utilize your investment and often the result is richer pages. So here are the consumable materials I've selected. It's some paper from Stampin' Up! from Kaiser Craft. I also have some thickers from American Crafts and some other stuff as well. I pre-cut my page parts in advance and I posted the measurements on the screen. And now I am just putting together a foundation page. Um, I would like to point out that the paper I am using, the checkered paper, is from a Christmas collection by Stampin' Up! And I wanted it to look less Christmassy, so I paired it with this wood grain paper from Kaiser Craft, which also happens to be a Christmas paper, and as well with some coordinating cardstock. I'm hoping that this page will look outdoorsy and not Christmassy. Again, this is a stash bust, and I'm using literally scraps of paper from leftover collections. So the page foundation I'm putting together here, um, I was inspired by a sketch I saw on masterfulscrapbookdesign.com. Um, there is an advanced design series called Tension. It's a part of a paid website that I participate in. Anyway, I don't have the sketch in front of me simply because I've done this page a few times. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm putting together this page foundation and you'll notice that I did some faux stitching in advance as well on the wood grain paper. I will do this a bit later on in the video so I will explain how I did that. Now these photos, which measure 3 by 3 with the photo mats, with the white photo mats, I am putting them on Polaroid style photo mats. So they measure 3 and a quarter inches by 3 and 3 quarter inches. I'm going to place them towards the middle of the foundation page, a little bit staggered. And once these are down, once the paper's down and the photos are down, the next step for me is almost always placing a title and the text. Now I want to use these um, wood grain phrase stickers from Thickers um, that have been in my stash for a long time, and I cut myself some letters out with my Big Shot. I glued them onto wax paper because I find that helpful when placing a title, especially when you have a multi-word title with a few different fonts. Um, this is a very decorative element on the page, this title. So this uh, permits me to play around with the placement a bit before committing to gluing it on a page. So now I'm gluing it to the page. And then I am going to put a text box above the photo on the left. I'm going to use a tag for that. And I'm going to pimp my tag. I'm going to add a bit of um, a, a ring around the hole. All I'm doing is punching out a uh, circle and first I used a hole punch so that created a ring and now I'm going to glue it around the hole and I'm adding some of this linen braided trim from Stampin' Up! Um, to the top and I'm going to 
use a glue dot to glue this. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this already, but in case I didn't, all of the material and tools will be listed in the description box below. So I decide to add a little strip of printed paper to the left side of this page. Um, I'm going to glue it down, but now my page is going to measure 12 and a half inches wide. So I have plenty of paper on the, on the right hand that I can trim. So that's what I'm going to do. The word magical is a bit crooked, but I do correct that. And now I there here's the decorations that I made in advance. And so what I did when I was at the beginning making this page, I went through my tools to see what I had that could enhance my theme. Now this is a hiking outdoorsy thing. So I, I found these two sets of dies and one of them is called Swirly Scribbles. Those are those round rings. And the other one is Seasonal Layers dies. Both of these are from Stampin' Up! And I cut some tree branches from that as well as leaves. Now these are very detailed dies. So I cut them in advance with my Big Shot and I did use the precision plate to cut these. Um, I also put glue on them in advance because it would have taken me forever to do that on camera. So I wanted to spare you that uh, time. So now what I'm doing is building some clusters and I'm going to do them in three different weights. So that's the big one towards the bottom right and the other two are kind of supporting embellishment clusters. Um, what I did off camera is, was I cut out some red flowers as well. I wanted to introduce a bit of red into this page without making it look too Christmassy because there's a bit of red in the paper. The photos are very dark but my top is red. Um, but every time I added something red it felt too Christmassy for me. I had these flowers. Anyway I cut it out of the video but I did add red in my title. The ring on the journaling tag is red and now what I'm doing is creating a little tab and I will do some ink in red and I'm hoping that this won't look too Christmassy. Now the stamp set I'm using is called Tabs for Everything. So I'm making myself a little ring and I stamped a heart in the middle and then I'm going to punch it out. As you see, there's a coordinating punch and I'm going to put the word amazing uh, on the bottom. It's a fun little stamp set that works really well. And you'll see I'm going to add it to the top right hand corner. So I have a few hits of red on the page and I don't think it looks too Christmassy. That's my kitty cat, Lord Stanley. Now I'm just doing some finishing touches and all I'm doing is adding a bit of faux stitching with a template by Stampin' Up! paper piercing tool and I'm joining the holes together with a pen. I'm joining them with a red pen and this is simply a um, very non-aggressive way of adding a very small touch of color to a page just a little bit of stitching. It could be real stitching of course. I'm doing faux stitching um, in two spots on the page and that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know. Leave a comment, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to Scrapbooking Quebec. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.